Hello my dear students, in this lecture we will see stresses on inclined plane for 1D loading and again in this topic we will calculate maximum normal stress and minimum normal stress as well as maximum shear stress acting on any one plane. Now in previous lecture we have seen stresses on inclined plane and the same formulas we are using here let us consider for 2d loading let us consider for 2d loading this is a 2d loading here this is the stress sigma x along x axis on x plane this is a stress sigma y sigma y and let us say there is tau xy there is shear stress also let us consider there is shear stress on the element also tau xy right for such type of loading, if I consider any one inclined plane, for such type of 2D loading, if I consider inclined plane, and the plane is inclined at angle theta with vertical in anti-clockwise direction. Now, for this plane also, on any one plane, there are two stresses, that is one normal stress and one shear stress. Therefore, for this inclined plane, there is one normal stress, that is sigma theta, and there is one shear stress parallel to the plane, tau theta. And formula to calculate this sigma theta and tau theta is sigma theta is equal to sigma x plus sigma y by 2 plus sigma x minus sigma y by 2 cos 2 theta plus tau xy sin 2 theta. This is the formula to find normal stress on any inclined plane. And tau theta is nothing but sigma x minus sigma y by 2 sin 2 theta minus tau xy cos 2 theta these two formulas always you have to remember and theta is nothing but theta is nothing but angle of inclined plane angle of inclined plane inclined plane with a vertical with a vertical in anti clockwise direction in anti clockwise direction direction this sign convention we have to use here now for 1D loading, our target is to find 1D for 1D loading. These are the formulas for 2D loading. Now, 1D loading means either maybe it a tie rod, let's say tie rod. If it is a tie rod, means for this element, it is subjected to tensile load. Let us consider the rod is subjected to tensile stress sigma. This is called tie rod. And if I consider one small element in this rod, the small element is subjected to unidirectional loading. Right. And if I consider strut, strut is nothing but compressive member. Compressive member. Now, this is a strut. It is subjected to compressive stress sigma. Right. Therefore, if I consider element on the strut, it is subjected to compression and it is 1D loading. It is 1D loading. Now, for 1D loading, therefore, if I want to draw stress tensor, stress tensor for 1D loading is, see, for, firstly, we will draw for 2d loading stress tensor for 2d loading is nothing but we can say sigma xx tau xy tau yx and sigma yy this already we have seen in previous lectures similarly for 1d loading stress for 1d loading stress tensor for 1d loading is nothing but sigma only sigma only that is one by one matrix one by one matrix now this matrix we are considering here now in 1D loading, in 1D loading that is uniaxial stress system, 1D means 1D loading means uniaxial stress system, right. Let us consider tie rod, let us consider tie rod, we will do analysis for tie rod. That is tie rod is nothing but if I consider element on the tie rod, it is subjected to tensile load sigma, tensile load sigma, right. Now here what is sigma x? Sigma x is plus sigma, tension means positive stress. What is sigma y? There is no stress on y plane in y axis, right? Therefore, sigma y is 0. Again, there is no shear stress, tau xy is equal to 0. Therefore, let us calculate sigma theta and tau theta. If I consider any inclined plane, if I consider any inclined plane at angle theta with vertical in anti clockwise direction, then sigma theta becomes sigma theta is equal to sigma x plus sigma y by 2 plus sigma x minus sigma y by 2 cos 2 theta plus tau xy sin 2 theta right 
Now here sigma y is zero and tau x y is zero. As tau x y is zero, this term becomes total zero. Therefore, put sigma y zero and sigma x as positive. Put sigma x as positive sigma and sigma y as zero. Therefore, the value becomes tau theta is equal to sigma by two plus sigma by two cos two theta. Now here consider sigma by two common. Therefore, sigma by two one plus cos two theta. 1 plus cos 2 theta and we know that 1 plus cos 2 theta 1 plus cos 2 theta is nothing but 2 cos square theta trigonometry formula therefore put in above formula therefore sigma theta becomes sigma by 2 into 2 cos square theta is equal to sigma cos square theta means on any inclined plane for 1d loading sigma theta that is normal stress becomes sigma cos square theta again this is very important as point of point of point of competitive examination right now if you want to find the maximum and minimum value of this sigma theta then we have to see we have to put different values of theta here now number one number one if this theta becomes one as uh, zero degree if this theta becomes zero degree then cos zero becomes one cos zero becomes one therefore cos g cos square zero becomes one which is the maximum value of any cos cos 0 is the maximum value therefore on this plane we will get maximum normal stress therefore sigma max sigma max is equal to can i say sigma which is at theta is equal to 0 degree at theta is equal to 0 degree you will get maximum value of normal stress which is equal to sigma now for minimum value for minimum value we have already here formula of sigma theta right now for minimum value what we have to do we have to find the minimum value of cos theta right up now here as sigma theta is equal to sigma cos square theta right and here cos square there is a cos square and square is never negative we know that square of any value is always positive therefore we have to see what is the minimum value of cos square theta therefore minimum value of cos square theta must be zero then therefore cos theta must be 0 therefore theta must be 90 degree theta must be 90 degree therefore number 2 if theta is equal to 90 degree then sigma theta becomes sigma minimum that is equal to 0 and it is at 90 degree at theta equal to 90 degree and sigma maximum is at theta is equal to 0 degree means you can see between maximum normal stress plane or at theta is equal to 0 degree for 1d loading sig we will get sigma max which is equal to applied stress sigma at theta is equal to 90 degree you will get sigma minimum which is equal to 0 right and angle between maximum normal stress and minimum normal stress is 90 degree we can say angle between minimum normal stress and maximum normal stress is 90 degree and maximum is at 0 degree and minimum is at 90 degree now we will find we will find shear stresses on inclined plane shear stresses on inclined plane now for the given case what was the value sigma x is g, uh, sigma x is plus sigma sigma y is 0 tau x y is 0 for the given loading this was the loading right this was the loading normal stress along x axis now tau theta what is the formula for tau theta tau theta is nothing but sigma x minus sigma y by 2 sin 2 theta sin 2 theta minus tau x y cos 2 theta now here as tau x y is 0 therefore this total term becomes 0 and put the sigma y as equal to 0 therefore tau theta becomes tau theta is equal to sigma by 2 sin 2 theta and since we know that sin 2 theta is nothing but 2 sin theta cos theta 2 sin theta cos theta put this value in this calculation therefore tau theta becomes sigma by 2 into 2 sin theta cos theta now 2 2 gets cancelled therefore shear stress on any inclined plane at angle theta becomes sigma sin theta cos theta for 1d loading this is for 1d loading right now if i want to find maximum shear stress then this sin theta cos theta product first this sin theta cos theta product becomes maximum when theta is equal to 45 degree when theta is equal to 45 degree this sin theta becomes sin 45 which is equal to 
again cos theta becomes cos 45 sin 45 and cos 45 are same it is nothing but 1 by root 2 this is the value of sin 45 as well as cos 45 and sin theta cos theta sin theta into cos theta this product becomes 1 by root 2 into 1 by root 2 is equal to 1 by 2 which is the maximum value of sin theta and cos theta product right therefore when theta is equal to 45 this tau becomes tau maximum which is equal to sigma into 1 by 2 that is sigma by 2 sigma by 2 at 45 degree at theta equal to 45 degree as well as well second if theta becomes 135 that is 45 plus 90 degree then in it is in second quadrant and sin 135 becomes 1 by root 2 and cos 145 135 becomes minus 1 by root 2 therefore the product sin 135 into cos 135 this product becomes minus 1 by 2 minus 1 by 2 again this is again maximum value on negative side therefore on this plane tau theta which is equal to tau maximum becomes sigma into minus 1 by 2 that is minus sigma by 2 means here what is happening number one when theta is equal to 45 degree tau maximum is equal to sigma by 2 which is positive therefore it is clockwise shear it is clockwise shear right and secondly when theta is equal to 135 degree the tau maximum is equal to minus sigma by 2 which is anti-clockwise shear it is called anti-clockwise shear negative means anti-clockwise shear positive means clockwise shear and again see here 45 and 135 the angle between two tau max is 90 degree angle between both tau max is 90 degree right and previously we have seen at theta is equal to 0 at theta is equal to 0 sigma max we have calculated at theta is equal to 90 degree we have calculated sigma minimum now see the observations we have to simply observe few things here right it is this observation is very very important now the conclusions I am writing here, the conclusions what we have calculated for 1D loading, these conclusions I am writing here because these conclusions are very much important for further calculations. Number one, number one, for 1D loading, these conclusions are for 1D loading. Here I am writing for 1D loading that is for such type of loading, for such type of loading, sigma, sigma, 1D loading, right, for such type of loading, number one when theta is equal to 0 degree we will get sigma max is equal to sigma means on at theta is equal to 0 degree on this plane we are getting maximum normal stress secondly when, but on this plane what is the tau theta tau theta is nothing but sigma sin theta cos theta that we have calculated means when theta is equal to 0 degree tau on 0 degree plane 0 degree plane what you will get sin 0 sin 0 is 0 Right, therefore this becomes 0 sin 0 is 0 therefore this becomes 0 means on tau on sigma max plane tau on this 0 degree is 0 right means the plane on which there is maximum normal stress then shear stress is 0 secondly when tau theta is equal to 45 degree we have calculated tau max is equal to plus sigma by 2 that is clockwise shear third point when theta is equal to 90 degree we have calculated sigma minimum which is equal to 0 right and uh, for 90 degree tau 90 degree put in this formula 90 degree now cos 90 is 0 cos 90 is 0 therefore tau or at 90 degree becomes 0 means on minimum normal stress plane tau is 0 that means the plane on which minimum normal stress is acting on this plane also shear stress is 0 means on maximum normal stress as well as on minimum normal stress shear stress is 0 here and thirdly when theta is equal to 135 degree then we have calculated tau max is equal to minus sigma by 2 that is anti-clockwise shear this is anti-clockwise shear again you can see the angle between sigma max and sigma minimum is 90 degree the angle between two tau max is 90 degree but angle between any angle between sigma max and tau max is 45 and angle between sigma minimum and tau maximum is also 45 Right, these conclusions later I will dictate again. Now, if loading is like this, let us say if loading is like this, 
along y axis sigma along y axis sigma right it is also one d loading and in strength of material subject this type of loading you have applied while drawing stress strain diagram right on universal testing machine while drawing normal stress versus normal strain diagram in strength of material you have applied such type of loading now for such type of loading now for the plane for this cross section at what angle the maximum shear stress will act we have already seen when theta is equal to 45 degree there will be tau max which is equal to sigma by 2 and if it is a ductile material we know that from strength of material or material science ductile materials are weak in shear ductile materials are weak in shear loading shear loading therefore ductile material fails due to shear loading ductile materials fails due to shear loading and maximum shear stress is acting at theta is equal to 45 degree to the axis of load right therefore you have seen that for mild steel the failure on utm machine is cup cone failure let us say this is a failure of mild steel right this is how the mild steel is going to fail on utm universal testing machine while calculating stress strain diagram now with the axis of load this is the axis of load vertical axis of load the inclination of failure plane the inclination of failure plane is 45 degree that is this 45 degree crack or 45 degree failure is a shear failure because ductile materials are weak in shear hence ductile materials fails due to maximum shear stresses and maximum shear stress occurs at 45 degree for 1d loading therefore the cup cone failure this is the cone and this is the cup the cup cone failure of mild steel is considered as shear failure thank you dear students in next lecture we will see another special case of stresses on inclined plane which is called pure shear condition